All right. Uh, we're going to call this meeting to order for the May 8th, 2024 Baltimore City um, Board of Ethics meeting. Um, my name is Chair Steve Fogelman. I'm joined by Arnold Sampson and John McCauley. We're also joined by our Ethics Director, Chris Amberger, and Aishan Bond. They're all present, providing administrative and technical support for us here today. Um, very quickly, uh, all participants in the public session of the board meeting acknowledge and consent to the video and audio recording of the public session and the publication and the recording on the board's website and social media accounts. For the Open Meetings Act, the board discloses that it adjourned its virtual open meeting on April 10th, 2024 to enter the administrative session at approximately 3.10 p.m. We had four board members present. We discussed administrative matters and complaints. Today, the board may need to close some or all of this meeting to preserve the confidentiality mandated by the ethics code or as otherwise authorized by the State Open Meetings Act. Likewise, upon adjournment of the open session, the board may reconvene today for an administration, administrative session to discuss non-public administrative functions of the board. Good afternoon. Thank Good you afternoon. for being here. Uh, we welcome, welcome our friends from the Baltimore Civic Fund. Um, why don't you start by introducing yourself? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Hesuk Chung. I am the president of the Baltimore Civic Fund and joined uh, is Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Bonnegan. I'm the director of partnerships here at the Civic Fund. Yeah. So we put together a very brief PowerPoint presentation where I would just uh, provide a quick overview, high level of just our history, kind of where we are now. And then we would dig a little deeper with Rachel going into some of our programmatic partnership work. So um, we are nearly 43 years old. Our mission is to enhance the quality of life for all residents of Baltimore, one grant, one program, and one partnership at a time. We have some fundamental values that really ground our work. We've spent a couple of years uh, strategically, strategically thinking and aligning everything we do on these principles. The first is equity. We try to seek and integrate a equity lens, both internally and as an employer, externally uh, for stewards of funds and private public partnership and everything we do. We're really top of mind for us is innovation. We're trying to continually um, think of ways to think outside the box. As we know, in city and, and jurisdictions are confronted with so many things that we need to do for our residents. And finally, the principle of collaboration. We recognize that um, true authentic collaboration is really hard to do but we're really committed to it because we believe that that is really the catalyst for the long-term change and really um we're gonna go into the bolt bolts and just the uh the everyday work that we do i would divide it into a couple categories and rachel will go into it but really quickly we are a 501c3 we have uh, we were created by city council and Mayor Schaefer. We were created um, in 1981 and served primarily as a fiscal sponsor for the city of Baltimore to advance mayoral priorities, managing over $20 million um, in over 100 city programs. Now, I just want to take a distinction between fiscal agent and fiscal sponsor. Fiscal sponsor is where we actually, um, we could get into a little more, but fiscal agent is not what we do, which is really uh, serving as a, fisc uh, a fiduciary pass through, but we serve as a fiscal sponsor where the funds um, at its inception uh, is uh, managed by us in terms of the reporting and everything of that nature. So we'll go into that in more detail. Next slide, Rachel. Um, again, we see ourselves as kind of a conduit for in a division of the finance team. We are the financial and administrative backbone for many, many of the city's projects, both current and past. This supports and helps build and sustain priority programs uh, through private philanthropic funds, as well as some minimal, but some federal and state public opportunities that come our way. And I'm going to hand this over to Rachel to talk about what that would look like. Yeah, so I'm going to try to go over mostly what we do that you all would be involved with. And that is when we are um, helping an agency 
solicit funds, collect donations, that sort of thing. We have a lot of other stuff that we do, but I think this is probably where you all, your main focus is. So when an agency is using us to solicit funds, they are using our 5013 status to secure those funds. Um, those funds have to be consistent with our charitable organization status, as well as the standards of you all and whatever approved waiver they you have already provided them with. Um, in a perfect world, the agency would contact us before they submitted a waiver application to you all. Uh, there is a fiscal sponsorship section where we would talk about what are the financial controls are at the Civic Fund. Um, to be fair, that does not happen 100% of the time, in part, I think, because we don't have to sign it, so they don't necessarily know. We sign reports, but we don't sign the application. And so sometimes one gets past us and it shows up surprise to us already approved by you all but mostly we try to communicate to folks that they should send it to us first so we can fill out that section about the fiscal sponsor accurately um and then once that waiver is approved by you all we typically work together to do the reporting if there is any sort of information that would come from the agency is sort of information on who they've solicited and how and then the information on um, monies collected as well as expenses paid would come through us since we're the ones that are um, doing both those things. One big way that we do that um, is a online donation page. We call it a QGIF page because that's the platform that we use. But an, an agency would say to us, we'd like, you know, we have a waiver, we'd like a QGIF page put up where the public could donate. So for example, um, AFRAM is one of those. The Key Bridge Fund for the families affected by the collapse is another um, example. The Rawlings Conservatory is another example. And so that page is hosted on our website. The public can make donations there um, mm -hmm. one time or they some some accounts are they're allowed to do uh, like monthly, like a regular monthly twenty five dollar donation, that kind of thing. Um, that money is collected by us. When it's collected by us, it's tagged via QGIV so we know which account it's supposed to go into. Um, and then we discuss with the agency how much money they've received and how they want to spend it um, according to the account and according to the waiver. We don't, typically we do charge an admin fee on funds that we are received by us. The place where there's an exception is the QGIV page because sometimes those, are, those donations are very small. So we're not taking, um, we pay all the fees through QGIV, we don't charge those to the agency. And then what we do is at the end of a quarter, if they've received $1,000 or more through that QGIV page, we will assess an admin fee at that time. But if they don't, we don't assess an admin fee at all. Um, and then donors will receive acknowledgement of their donation, again, through mm -hmm. QGIV. They will, I see your question, John, I'll get to it in one second. Through QGIV, they can, they will get an automated email response. Um, if they mail a check into us as a donation or a sponsorship, or it comes to us through wire or ACH, that kind of way, um, then um, we send them a letter uh, that has six signs. It says, we've received your donation and here's your credit for it for your taxes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Mr. McCauley, you had a question. Yes, thank you. Uh, and sorry to interrupt. I, I just, no. if, you, if you said what QGIVE is, I missed it. That's okay. Oh. It's, an, it's an online platform that um, accepts donations so that if you wanted to donate $25 to Rollins Conservatory, you could go through that site and you would just do it online. Yep. So it's a way for folks to donate to us through an online portal, which yep. is typically how we get donations. Occasionally, particularly with the Keybridge Fund, we've received a lot through the mail, but mostly we receive them through this online portal. Yep. And John, this is really for any agency that want to have a, a direct, uh, you know, donate page. So QGIVE is like any other donation uh, platform like GoFundMe. Uh, yeah. There's uh, Razor's Edge. There are multiple platforms that people can use. We use QGIVE and we have for the last four years. And again, I want to stress that as part of partnering with us, we absorb all the fees, transaction fees, the hosting fees. We take all the fees so that the agency gets as much of the uh, funds raised through these private donations. Okay, thank you. So QGIVE is a separate some sort of a service that provides this sort of capability or is it in-house capability? No, no, it's or... separate. 
it's public. It's yeah. used by lots of different organizations, so it's okay. completely separate from us. All right, I'm, I I probably just don't know a lot of things I should know, but I that's, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Yeah, if you're familiar with GoFundMe, as Hi Sook said, it's very similar. It is very, very similar. similar. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we get direct payments, as I noted, from a funder or for from a donor, and they need proof that they've made that mm -hmm. donation, um, we will um send a letter out. When we get grants, which I know aren't necessarily a part of the ethics process, but when they when a agency goes to a funder and the grant funding comes directly to us, mm -hmm. um, we would get all of the appropriate documentation with regard to the grant itself and then any expenses. Mm -hmm. And then any expenses that we pay with either donated funds, sponsorship fees, um, grant funds, we will notify the agency when we've made those payments. They have to sub again, they have to submit appropriate documentation to us like invoices and W-9s and all that sort of thing. And then we will provide them with transaction reports. You may have mm -hmm. seen copies of our transaction reports in the reporting that you all get from agencies. Mm -hmm. And then that is what we do that I think most closely involves the Board of Ethics. We do other things which don't come through you, which I'll just touch on very, very briefly, which is that um, we are a fiscal administrator, as Heisuk noted, for city funds. Those go, do go through the Board of Estimates. When an agency wants to transfer over general city funds to us, that has to go through the Board of Estimates. Um, again, we will accept grant funds on behalf of an agency, so from a Weinberg or an ABLE. Those typically do not go through the Board of Estimates, but we contract directly with the funder. We sign the grant agreement. We manage the funds. We do the reporting. Um, and then we can do grant making for a city agency. So if a city agency wants to run a grant competition using their city general funds or some other federal funds, for example, we, but they don't have the capacity to open up a competition to go through 100 applications to do all of that, we can run that grant making process for them. There are a couple mm -hmm. of agencies that do it themselves, but we have done it as well for other agencies. And then this is high sex contact information. So any questions about any of that? Yeah. Um, any slide in particular? Yep. And for those who worked with us in the past, we've evolved quite a bit over the last five years. I just hit my five year mark and uh, we were a one person volunteer shop with a part time uh, you know, finance analyst to a staff of nine with a CFO and a law firm. So we're quite a different uh, agency now. So uh, if you have questions, uh, you know, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. I'm happy to partner in any way we can. We'll also send the presentation over after this mm -hmm. if you guys want to share that copy around. Yeah. like that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We'd, love, we'd love to have the deck and. Sure. And is there some um, handy reference and maybe even an explanation of the enabling legislation for the Civic Fund? I had no idea about this organization other than it shows up in our applications all the time. Yeah, 1981. Yeah, I, we, I think I have a copy of that. I'm happy to forward that to you. But actually, we just uh, uh, updated the documents through the BOE, the legal team. And so now we have a revised master agreement that we were happy to share. Okay, that that that'd be great. I, and, and I'm I won't promise to read all of it, but I no, no, <laughs> no. That's Every okay. Word yeah. is scintillating. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and John, I mean, I, I mean, I, just for context, there are organizations and agencies and projects that are very much aligned with what we do. Uh, you know, Baltimore. I want to say Philadelphia, L.A., New York. Atlanta, there's a handful of jurisdictions that actually have a nonprofit that partners with the mayor's office, such as us. But many, many localities have an office of innovation, office of grants management, office of um, you know technical support that actually do very similar work that we do. So um, I'm happy to share that as well because we. Um, meet quarterly with some of our partner organizations and uh, colleagues throughout the country just to talk about best practice. Thank you. Really appreciate the effort yeah. uh, that went into this presentation as well. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome. Thank you for the invitation. We're again, just look forward to hearing more. And anytime you have questions, please, Steve, please reach out. Yeah. Definitely.
it, there's so many things to do, in fact, perform that, right, we never see and most of the public never sees. But yeah, sounds like it's, uh, it's a Herculean task, and uh, we're grateful for your work. Thank you. Well, people are, I think the biggest shock is that we manage over 100 projects for the city. And I think when they hear that, they're, what? You know, like, what? <laughs> so, uh, Anything like Rachel said, from grant making to you know financial support and uh, and actually even fundraising uh, grant you know applications. So we you know we kind of run the gamut and try to be the uh, complement and the technical support that some of the agency staff need. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Steve, should we have our uh, waivers prior to all the uh, administrative nitty gritty? Well, no. In fact, I, I feel like I should have asked uh, what our agendas are today. What what kind? We have a hard stop, for example, probably before that. But so let me ask that now of our of our two members present. Um, obviously, we're going to move this along. But uh, is there anybody who's got a roll at four o'clock? I do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Okay. All right. Um, and if, if it's not too much, oh, we do. How many guests do we have here, Chris? One, two, we have three. Three, uh, two waiver applications, and we have one gift acceptance presentation, so gift acceptance request. Yeah, let's not subject them to our approval of written minutes <laughs> for our staff update. <laughs> Um, can we go down the line? Is that okay? Uh, do we have somebody present from the city of Baltimore procurement for their uh, gift solicitation waiver application from the mayor's office of small and minority business advocacy and development? How are you, ma'am? Hi, I'm what's great. How are you? I'm on an iPhone, so I'm blind. What's your What's your last name? Freund, F-R-E-U-N-D. Great. All right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Freund, and um, you're here to tell us about today's uh, waiver application. You may go ahead. So sure. Yeah. Um, thank you for having me. Um, the presentation from the Civic Fund was very informative, and I appreciate that. This is my first time with this process. Um, I'm Vanessa Freund. I'm the Chief of Innovation and Strategic Partnerships for the Small Minority Business Advocacy Office. Um, we are applying for a waiver for our annual procurement conference. Um, we hope to, we're going to use the funds to do, we want to support the conference with food. So we want to do breakfast. We'd like to be able to cover breakfast, cover lunch. Um, if we can cover some parking, we have um, security that we'd like to pay for. Um, we also are trying to do some like pipe and draping, um, as well as some wrapping of the columns in the convention center. That is where our procurement conference is taking place. Um, we The procurement conference was a yearly conference, and then it stopped for several years during COVID. We brought it back last year, and this is our first year um, requesting the waiver so that we can seek some sponsorship for the procurement conference. Thank you. All right, and once again, managed through the Civic Fund, right? Yeah, it will yeah. be, yeah. And then- uh, If I may ask, what, what is the way to, you mentioned sponsorships and uh, Again, the sponsorships are not gifts proper and mm -hmm. outside of the um, uh, ethics boards and the ethics laws jurisdiction. So what part, uh, what kind of uh, ratio would you uh, have for sponsorships versus true gifts? Gifts? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really, this is our first, our first year doing this. So I want to say the, the gifts, um, I'm going to say like 40% gifts, 60% sponsorship. Um, we just wanted to to follow the appropriate process. And um, we, so we fully anticipate getting gifts as well as that sponsorship. Any other questions from our members? 
Not I. Yeah. No, we thank you for being here. Um, thank you. And answered my questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's no further questions for Ms. Roy. Anything okay. you want to say in, in closing, Ms. Roy? Or no, that is Ms. it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You're Thanks very. For your Thanks for your presentation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, members, we, we want to discuss this at this time. Um, with, uh, I'm happy ahead. to discuss it, uh, or or if we can go ahead with the other business and and help these folks get on their way. Good yeah. idea. Yeah. Get those all back on the street. <laughs> say. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we'll uh, hear from. Uh, Baltimore City Health Department Maternal Infant Care Program. Do we have a guest here for that? Great. Thank you for being here. And mm -hmm. Kathy. Um, my name is Kathy Costa. I am um, with the Bureau of Maternal and Child Health at the Baltimore City Health Department. Thanks for being here. Tell us about uh, today's request. Yes, so I'm here on behalf of one of my supervisees, Donica Fife Stallworth. She is the director of the Maternal and Infant Care Program, which provides nurse home visiting to first time young mothers under age 26 um, <clears throat> who are city residents. And we uh, we visit them from pregnancy through the second birthday. On June 6th, we are holding a graduation for uh, about 20 clients whose children have turned two, and they they are um, leaving the program, oftentimes with new jobs and stable living situations and or going back to school um, with their kids developing on track. And so the um, the graduation is being held with uh, at the BNO Railroad Museum. We just learned today that Mayor Scott will be in attendance um, at the graduation, which is lovely. Um, but we are seeking uh, donations for items that can be raffled, basically tickets, um, tickets to sporting events and um, educational opportunities uh, in the city, such as future tickets to the BNO Railroad Museum. And we would be raffling those tickets off to the graduating clients. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I'm having, I'm, I, I want to apologize. I'm having some difficulty finding um, your paperwork here. I I am also, it's, it was not in my, in the packet that I had printed out for me, but maybe I, maybe I missed it. Could I forward it? Um, is there? I I know I have Miss Bond's um, email because you invited me. I can for I could reply back and attach it. That's yeah, fine. That's, yep. Okay. Let me try that. Oh yeah, I found mine. You did. What, what's what's yeah. it under? If you don't mind. Uh, well, it, it's the the way mine was printed out for me. I'm not saying this is the way I received it. The the statute background was first, and then uh, and then it's followed by the application for uh application for approval of the nurse family partnership home visiting oh, program okay. that's that's the one we're talking about is that right yeah mm -hmm. an error here i was looking i may be looking under the wrong month of our meeting but that would be my excuse sorry about that if you just give me one second i just want to pull that up Okay, thank you. I've, I've got this under control now, so I appreciate it. And I'm going through it now. If anybody has any questions, like. No, I, I it, this sounds like a, um, a very uh, appropriate request. And um, 
it looks to me like the application is in order. I'm, um, I'm reading it now. Yeah, it's an under five thousand dollar request, written like a five hundred dollar request. So, <laughs> right, and it's not even it's not monetary donations. It's just sort of things Tickets. that can be yeah. uh, raffled yeah. off. And so, um, I don't I don't have any questions about it. Yeah, this is great, and obviously great uh, great work here. So, uh -huh. uh, unless you have any other um, anything else you want to tell us, Ms. Gusta, we'll. Uh, yeah, we appreciate you being here. All right, thank you very much. Thank Absolutely. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, um, thank you. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, jump in now to the uh, basketball court gift acceptance request that uh, Lafayette had at Aiken Park. Good afternoon, sir, how are you? Good, how are you all? Good, are you, you're here for, um, rec uh, for oh. the uh, rec, uh, rec and parks? Yes, Baltimore City Rec and Parks. Yes. Right. Thank you. Uh -uh. Yeah, so my name is Carlos Camacho. I work in the Community Engagement Strategic Partnerships Division for Baltimore City Rec and Parks. I am uh, joined by my colleague, Mark Phelps. Um, he's our contract contracts administrator. Um, and so just a little bit of background of this. So um, an employee, of Spinello Companies reached out to Baltimore City Rec and Parks um, April 8th um, about a potential donation of services to Baltimore City Recreation and Parks at Lafayette and Aiken Park. Um, so they were um, asking about what the process was to donate uh, new hoops and to resurface a current blacktop that is at uh, Lafayette and Aiken Park. And the way that this project proposal came about was the result of um, a local community um, church beyond the walls, Christian ministries that had reached out to Spinellas uh, about another project about donating memorial tree plaques um, around that park. Um, and then that kind of created this conversation of, hey, you know, it also would, would be great would be if you could help resurface this court. Um, and, you know, they were um, you know, generous enough to to move forward with that process. And so um, we routinely get these types of donation uh, requests to, you know, improve city parks. Um, we ha fortunately have Mark, Mark Phelps on board to help draft these donation agreements um, in conjunction with our law department. So when he drafted a donation agreement and sat down with um, our law department, they kind of flagged that Spinello companies had worked previously with um, Baltimore City Rec and Parks and other city agencies. And so they just wanted to ensure that we went through the correct process um, so that you know everything was above board and nothing was seen like um, this with this potential donation. Um, the company could get additional work in the future. Um, and so that's basically why we're here. And, um, you know, if you all have any other questions about this, I'd be happy to try to answer those. Well, sure. And I think this is um, educational for others who may be interested in the topic. Why, um, why do it this way? Why not, for example, why not ask for it in the budget? And then award a contract. I mean, and just uh, so people understand that this does happen in city mm -hmm. government. You go, go yeah, ahead. yeah. I think uh, I think the process is just a uh, a bit quicker. Um, and you know, if we went through the budget process of putting this into the capital capital budget, then you know, it's not just Rec and Parks who's making the decision about the necessity and the need for this court resurfacing. It would be, you know, um, Department of Planning. Um, it would be the city council. It would be the mayor all making, having to make these decisions. And, you know, in a world of scarcity, uh, choosing between projects is often quite difficult. So um, when you have a, uh, a donor who's willing to, you know, not provide specific, not provide funds, but services, in-kind services, um, this is kind of a more direct process to get that uh, 
benefit to the city. And well, so what you're saying it is good could take a couple of years. You know, yeah, to, at these courts. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. Thank you for answering my question. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just for to, to provide a bigger uh, understanding of it. Um, the if there were other uh, projects that Spinelli or any other control donor were to bid on in the future, um, how you, you mentioned a number of uh, um, steps and uh, resources that or barriers that any kind of proposal like this would have to uh, cross, but who would make the final decision to award this particular uh, control donor another uh, contract? Um, so uh, is, would that be the same people who are now saying, who would now accept the, the donation, the in-kind donation, or is the decision-making pro uh, process such that it would the, the the chances of this donation influencing one or several members of that premium or commission, um, how how is that minimized? How 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 it, it, it is that is that the number of of steps that any bid out product would have, or, or a project would have to go through, or um, could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure. So I'd like to start by saying that. Um, so the primary way that Spinello Companies works with Baltimore City Rec and Parks is as a subcontractor. So they specialize in pipeline and water and wastewater systems, which is not really in the wheelhouse of Baltimore City Rec and Parks. Um, so you know, Baltimore City Rec and Parks has no control over the selection of a subcontractor as part of a larger project that we may do. You know, if we're building a rec center, for example, a lot of pipes do need to be put in place for a project of that sort. Um, but we have no control over the selection of a subcontractor uh, from the actual prime contractor that we award a project to. We simply monitor and inspect the work um, and ensure that it's in line with what the uh, the contract has specified. Um, and then as a regards to kind of the process for procurement for these uh, larger bidded projects. So projects are traditionally bid as a as a lump sum. So it's like we need a rec center built and this is the these are the specifications and this is the uh, yeah, essentially these are the specifications. So then prime contractors um, who are pre-qualified with the city can then bid for those projects. And then the lowest bidder who's in compliance with all of the project requirements and city requirements is then chosen for that project. And that is primarily done within our capital, um, capital development division in conjunction with our, um, with our director. Now for these types of smaller donations, uh, it's not just capital development looking at these projects. It's our park maintenance division, our forestry division. Yes, our capital division, um, our deputy director of parks. So it's multiple people looking at all these projects. Um, and so I hope that gets to a little bit of what you of what you asked. Okay, uh, that answers my question. Thank you. Are there any questions from our members? There's a bill. I don't have any questions. I I I I do think that um, I I may want to look a little bit and maybe be guided by Chris a little bit more on the law here. I mean, Spinello is the very essence of a controlled donor. Uh, if you if you can drive down Baltimore City without seeing one of their trucks putting in new water pipes, yeah. um, so. And and that doesn't mean it's disqualifying, obviously, but it it does seem to me I, I I need to understand the law around this a little better. But I thank you, Mr. Camacho, for the presentation. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.
All right. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. You too. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, any member discussion? I want to start with the um, small and minority business advocacy and development request. Hmm. Procurement conference. I, I I thought the uh, request was appropriate to uh, to get some funds to provide uh, security and catering for the event, and uh, I, I didn't see anything problematic about how they were going to go about doing it, and so I I don't have a particular issue with that one. Same here. Yeah, I feel the same way. Do um, any more discussion, or does anybody want to make a motion on that? I'll move to approve that. Second. We have uh, moved and seconded for the approval of the uh, gift solicitation waiver application from the Mayor's Office of Small and Minority Business Advocacy and Development. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, that uh, is unanimous with three. I will go ahead and move along to the nurse family partnership home visiting program gift solicitation waiver application for the maternal and infant care program. But it was a good presentation. Uh, like you said, John, it's not, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of in kind. It's uh, really de minimis compared to many of the things we see and obviously big impact there. I don't see any ethical um, issues whatsoever. How do, how do you all feel? I agree personally. Same here. All right, great. Um, I'll go ahead and move to approve that. I second. <laughs> I, I said it first. I said it, I said, oh, I said it first. <laughs> we got to go. Yeah, we got, we got it. It's like the Kentucky Derby. It's by, it's by a nose. We're going to need That's right. That's right. Full full finish. Finish. All right, we got a motion at least one second here for uh, the approval for the maternal and infant care program gift solicitation waiver application signified by saying aye. 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 All right, that's also unanimous. All right, let's uh, discuss the third item of the day, the um, gift accepted request. So just as a footnote to this, um, this is kind of the first time that uh, the, the collaboration between the law department and ethics really has come through. Uh, based on a uh, you know observation that we made last year that uh, there are departments that have um, donation passive donation pages on their uh, websites that then lead to um, law department uh, drafted uh, documents that have to be signed um, to enable the donation, which which has in the past uh, not gone through the, the through the ethics board, it is a passive donation. It's an ongoing uh, uh, charitable campaign, so to say, in in those in those website buttons. Um, and this is working together with with Jeff. We have established a um, a path to you know bring that to the ethics board's attention as well, because in some of the cases, you know, these in-kind donations by, uh, by, by companies to um, especially the uh, Department of uh, uh, Parks and Recs um, is, you know, there can be, you know, anything that, that involves concrete is an expensive project and any donation of services and, and materials in that regard is, uh, Perhaps higher, perhaps higher amounts are involved than in our usual uh, waiver requests that we receive. So um, the question here is, um, would that donation um, be detrimental to the impartial and responsible conduct of uh, regular business? Um, for the department if they were to accept it and Perhaps, perhaps one one uh, question could have been addressed. Um, what what um, uh, measures are being taken to avoid that a donor 
receive special treatment later on in any kind of bidding process. So, and, and also while we talk about that, we ought to talk about precedent here at this point. And in fact, involving this agency just a couple of months ago, or it feels like a couple of months ago, but it was a splash pad at Patterson Park, remember? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, um, what did the board do to assuage any concerns in that matter, in your opinion? Uh, it it was not quite on point because the splash pad was the uh, was a an, an actual fundraising campaign through a friends for, of Patterson Park, but in the in the process of you know investigating the scenario, uh, we noticed that these passive uh, campaigns were ongoing there. And, and that really got the ball rolling. That's why really here, this is the this is the first uh, such incident, or such uh, request that we're getting. Um, in the past, this would have been bypassing the ethics board, and so the, the precedent would have been to uh, have the law department review the documents and commit the donor to you know certain provisions in the contract um, without the input of the ethics board. That is the precedent that you have. Yes. Members have uh, discussion. Yeah, I'm. I'm afraid I'm. I'm. And maybe I'm. I, I'm just uh, being over cautious. But I, I. It. It does seem to me that this one we have to tread carefully because this is. Uh, I mean, this is the very essence of a controlled donor. And it's going to be a visible project in a neighborhood, and it will it will redound to the benefit of the Department of Recs, but also, the, I'm sure the mayor is going to be there when that basketball court's opened, and um, he'll he'll notice that it was Spinello, and I, I'm sure. Well, I'm not sure, but I assume that Spinello is a good company and does good work and uh, has all the best intentions. That's that would be my assumption. But I, I do I do feel I'd like to hear from you, Steve, and you, Arnold, about your views on it. I, I just feel a little hesitant about saying a controlled donor can make a gift of this size, and and uh, and and some citizen looking on might might expect that maybe um, that might be good that might be good for some of the politicians who can take credit for it or the people who can take credit for it and um, and result in favorable treatment whether it's whether it's directly connected to that or not uh, so that that would be my general concern I certainly don't want to get in the way of, um, of this nice facility that they want to make though and I, so I'm, those are just my my off-the-cuff concerns uh, and I, I guess I, I I'll um, I'll accept being educated as I often am here let me hear from Arnold, and I'll be happy to, to tell you where, what I think. That's, that's what the usual the geniuses usually say that. They say, let the guy go first and lose his head, and then I'll I'll step in. And I, I understand that. Very, very strategic move. Um, appearances are important, and I love John for saying what he said. And so um, I think if we can take an action that... Um, that clarifies our concerns about the appearances um, to, to address at a minimum the appearances. And then um, the, the one piece that I come up with is we don't know who's going to be mayor next. So if anyone's playing to favor the current mayor and he ends up not being the next mayor, then um, then the likelihood of a conflict or um, a you know, ethical breach is diminished. Um, that's the best I can contribute at this juncture. I'll be happy to tell you where I'm thinking or where I'm trying to resolve this. Is that, you know, first of all, when we approve any gift solicitation waiver, for example, mm. we really don't see until after the fact who gave the money for the book back you know, the backpack program, for example, or anything like that. And, and at any time, one large controlled donor could make a huge contribution 
into one of these funds. And, and of course, there, there's always, just as there is here, always the possibility that um, there is an appearance of a conflict or an appearance um, of an ethical, potential ethical violation. Um, in this case, because it's a single donor, and we're, we're it's, I mean, it's a gift. It's so we have a single donor and that to me makes it even bigger and makes the, the optics more important. So I, um, yeah, so I, at this point, I am unsure as much as I think this is a wonderful thing, as much as I, I, I'm comforted by the fact that uh, Spinello is only a subcontractor and not a general contractor. Um, you know, this will end up in some elected officials district. So that person would naturally feel, you know, grateful. I mean, it's a gift. <laughs> it's poor breeding to not be grateful for a gift. <laughs> and there we balance that against the optics here. So I too, um, and I'm a little concerned about it, and I'm trying to think of what information would be helpful to me and the rest of the board in trying to formulate a resolution of this. Um, so that's where I am. Unfortunately, I. I... Well, we have a, we have a wordsmith um, who we've uh, greatly benefited uh, from um, in the form of Chris. And um, and uh, look at him smiling, saying, yes, I am. He smiled. He shook, shook his head no, but he was saying, yes, I am. That's correct. What do you want to say next, Arnold? <laughs> so so um, we can, I think, word something that says, uh, and by the way, this is not to take anything away from you, uh, Lejean. You, 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 um, you probably uh, can, you know, you know, craft or compose something nice. But I think if we say that, you know, we that uh, we think that this consider that this falls within. First off, it falls in the the within the scope of what the board of ethics does, and secondly, that we we are concerned that um, this is a a controlled donor, who um, we are hoping that um, that the ethics of city officials and and city stakeholders. Um, will um, cause them not to um, to um, to misdirect their energies in the future with respect to things that involve this company. I think if we say that, you know, and a good with the wording that I know Chris can can craft, then we will be saying we we are concerned about how this looks, but in in fact, it seems to be beneficial to the city and seems to not really be a ethical conflict um we could say that i think what would say you all well i i would be inclined to say something uh, like that arnold i uh i i mean i i do think a lot of those things you said go without saying in in mm -hmm. some respects and saying them just calls attention to them but i i think we can express as part of our rationale, if we want to approve it, and I'm not, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, if we wanted to approve it, I think we could say that um, we certainly understand that uh, there's a, there's an, optics is not the right word, I mean, it's the right word in, in casual conversation, but there's a, a perception problem, um, but that we believe that the, um, the, the value of the project to the city and the best interests of the city um, dictate in favor of of accepting this gift, understanding that uh, that it it's not a waiver of any conflict rules about awarding projects or anything else. It's everybody's still bound by the law. I I just wonder whether there's that any other because you you touched on this a little bit, Steve, in your questions about whether there's another way to structure it so that it's not such a a blatant, a blatant gift from a controlled donor. But, you know, as I say that, I'm thinking, well, then, I mean, a, uh, a rose by any other name uh, is still going to smell, smell the same. And it's, uh, it's going to be a rose by another name, you know, because it's going to be Spinello. So I, I suppose it's better to have it out in the open that it is Spinello rather than try to structure it in a way that hides it. But, um, yeah, 
I, I think we're sort of, is there some urgency here? Do they need a, a yes today or, you know, next month or when? when I don't believe that it, it is, it is uh, urgent, urgent. I think you know, probably a good time in the summer to, to get the, uh, get a basketball uh, course refurbished. Um, but um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to um, you know, follow the board's direction, wherever that direction may lead. Does, does the uh, law department advise us on these kinds of things or? or... The law department apparently has been pretty much signing off on the, or in the past at least, has had been signing off on, on I don't want to say all because I have my personal knowledge of that, but on, on uh, donation forms um, and donation agreements in the past. So I would uh, probably also have to go back to the donation agreement and see what is all covered in the terms of that agreement. And uh, may, I, I can't, what I can suggest is that we could, that I could take a shot at you know, number one, getting all the uh, facts, the legal uh, background together for this. And uh, in view, also in view of the donation agreement and um, report back to the board, um, you know, within this, the, the coming weeks, um, it's probably not urgent enough to have a separate or an email vote on this, but uh, that we could, um, and I can draft a response letter either way um, that uh, the board can could rule on next, at the next meeting. Yeah, and we five meetings, so we definitely want to give them a definitive answer no later than the next meeting. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But, unless there's any objection, I think we probably should defer this heading further um, further okay. research and, and deliberation. Okay. I, I, I think that's that's good. Arnold, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, that's okay. No, no. I don't I an interrupt an interruption from you is is acceptable, John. No, no, not a problem. Um, I'm thinking that we're going to deliberate this via email between now and then, so that uh, we may even decide electronically, um, act electronically um, to 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 you know resolve this matter, and then um, because I'm sure that the day, though it's not as Chris said, it may not be in the all fire urgency that they would love to get an ex approval just to tick the check the box and say that's taken care of uh, that that's what i assume so the sooner we can we can give them a, a response the better yeah. and we'll yeah arnold yeah i mean we'll go ahead and uh, deliberate through this um, in compliance with the open meetings act and we'll uh, we'll have a formal you know we'll we'll, we'll make sure we stay on those guardrails that's exactly, we're, we're what I'm, that's exactly what I meant to say. Exactly. <laughs> let, let, let me just say it would, I think it would be helpful. I know for me, if, if we could sort of boil down, what's the question we're being asked to answer? Yes. What, what is the question? I mean, it does seem to me that it's an approvable request. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, if the law said we can't approve it because they're a controlled donor and they came up and offered it and they're the sole donor, that would be easy. But apparently, it's not that easy. This is an approvable request. And, the, and what are the significant considerations we have to take into account before approving it? What do we have to weigh? Are, is it a discretionary call on our part, I guess? And, and that's, that's really what I'd like to sort of have crystallized in my mind before we vote on. So this is not, this, we, this is not considered a sponsorship. This is a grant of sorts, correct? Large, there, there's no, in, in kind donation. It's it's not in kind. In kind. Kind. Okay, that, I'm sorry, wrong technology, wrong terminology. So a, a gift under under the terms of the ethics law and a gift by a controlled donor. So yeah. uh, can uh -huh. this? And I'm, I'm I'll be happy to provide um, you know my research on that uh, probably by the end of the week. Um, you know, can the board? Uh, approve a large gift, which is a large gift here, of a controlled donor um, that otherwise would be 
you know, a, a gift of considerable value that otherwise mm. would be prohibited. Mm -hmm. I believe there, there are some sections in the ethics. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and like and like Steve was saying, I'm I'm I got a little comfort that it's a subcontractor at least to the Department of Rex right. and Park, but also this was not a solicited gift. This yeah, was right. a they, this was a an unsolicited gift. It's it's not as though somebody asked for some. Uh, yeah. Well, I I guess I, yeah, it's not as though somebody asked for some uh, gift cards for uh, underprivileged kids. <laughs> oh, that was mean. That was mean. Sorry, said that. <laughs> okay. And I think we um, should say that and whatever we say, maybe we should mention that one consideration that we um, that influenced our final decision was that it was not a solicited gift. How about that? As John just mentioned. Let's definitely consider all of the factors and the evidence here. Mm -hmm. For this next meeting or sooner. sooner. Uh, yeah, under the Open Meetings Act. So uh, I don't know why I'm having a hard time today with the um, with the attachments, but I just I don't know. I'm going to go back to the email. I don't see the the minutes. I know we got them. For um, y'all get the minutes. I'm not clear. I got, not, um, go I got draft go minutes of the open of the public uh, meeting. That's what you're talking about, I assume. Yeah, I just I. I think it might be my computer. So, does anybody have a discussion about the uh, public written minutes for April 10th? No. Mm -hmm. I have, I, I try not to print everything out, but um, it, it does become problematic because I've got all these windows open. Mm. Uh, Is it you, easy? Oh, go ahead. You, you can probably open open them in your email uh, because Nishan, uh, we sent them um, just before this meeting, so it should be right on top of your okay. email inbox. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, is it easier if I just attach the documents instead of putting them in a folder for you guys? Yes. It is. For me, it's yes. because there's so much in there. <laughs> I, I get lost, honestly. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what I'll do. I'll just attach the, um, maybe have the public separate in their folder and just have like the documents for you guys instead of deep uh, folders. Yeah. And I really appreciate you bringing it up because, you know, Mara um, Ford Romo was here forever and I never uh, iterated her. And I do think it would be, I know it'd be easier for me. Um, sure. You know, yeah, as, as doing that. Uh, speaking of which, uh, mm -hmm. we definitely want to wish Mara Ford Romo very well in the future. She served um, OIG, served the Ethics Board admirably during her tenure here. Um, we're sorry to see her go, but we know that she has a lot going on in her life, good things, and we'll see the future. And we look forward, can you hear me? Yes. We, we look forward to seeing her uh, do great things here in the future in our community. So thank you. Yes. Here, here. Here, here. You know. And we're um, happy yeah, to have Nishan stepping up and. Um, mm -hmm. In this transition and we're looking forward to it and in that regard um uh, our venerable staff um we'd like to hear from you on some updates oh did you vote on the minutes to approve the minutes no i, I don't i'm i'm still trying to pull them up okay. so I, i'm sorry I'm, uh, filibustering yeah. so why don't you guys talk think okay. about where so, they are bugs and then vote on you mean to go first? okay um, for the help desk and ethics training, I will provide those numbers um, at the next meeting. Um, for complaints, uh, we received three new complaints, um, altogether 27 so far this fiscal year. Um, one secondary waiver, but uh, no new requests. 
For gift solicitations, we received two uh, new requests for this meeting. Um, zero waivers expired since the last meeting. Um, right now we have 26 active waivers. Um, and for financial disclosures, um, the deadline was April 30th. Um, still have some late flowers. Um, at this point, we have uh, 27, uh, Lord Jesus, I can't read numbers, 2,712 filers. Um, of course, that number is probably higher, but um, that's the last report from the IT department I've received. And for lobbying, we have 101 lobbyists that have registered for this year. Yeah, I have to say, uh, both Mara, who had, who had been back for three weeks since the end of her maternity leave and assisted greatly in the last phase of the timely uh, submission of financial statements, uh, both did amazing work. Um, and uh, I, I, can't, I can't say enough positives about both of them, and especially Nayshan here, how she you know, picked up the ball and ran with it. And uh, also part of one, one of the reasons why we don't have the exact uh, help desk uh, uh, numbers is because Nishan handled literally dozens of them over the last uh, four weeks. Um, the last time I, I looked this morning, she was still, you know, transferring or, or uh, recording them and that we were at over 750 uh, for the year. Uh, also, the number of 2,712, usually uh, filers, usually we have about 2,800, 2,900, something like that, just under 3,000. And I believe most of them, 1,500 of them came in in the last two weeks or three weeks. So it, it was a Herculean effort to do so. And uh, we're in the process of hunting down the stragglers at this point. Excellent, thank you. Now I do have the administrative minutes from last time, but I cannot find for the life of me the public draft minutes. If I, you go ahead and email yeah. me those at this time, and then um, and then Chris and Arnold, if you if you're you're probably doing better than me, <laughs> so. But if anybody else needs them, let her know. Um. I'm not I, as clear. I have the public meeting minutes. You have them? I have the public ones, yeah. For for okay. yeah. And then the administrative ones are in with the administrative agenda. I did okay. not see them in with the public agenda. Uh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I've got them now. Okay, so they were in the administrative side. No problem. Oh. No problem. Okay. So no, no folders. Problem. Got it. Good, <laughs> good. No problem. All right. Let's. Uh, th let me just give me a second to take a look at it, since you guys mm -hmm. already been brought up on this. With Yeah, I have no uh, issues to it as to form or, or content. Um, I, yeah, may, there may be a typo I don't see, but I don't see one. So, so I um, let me know if uh, there's a motion to approve these minutes. Uh, I move that we approve the minutes from the April um, session. All right, um, I'll second that. John, we can give you a minute to read them if you want. No, I, I just finished reading them. All right, I'll go ahead and uh, call for the vote to approve the April 10th, 2024 public minutes. Take it by saying aye. 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 All right, that is done. Um, what do we have left uh, on our agenda here today? I think we are done with the uh, public. Yep. yep. All right. Yep. 
FYI, just I want to just do a, a rewind for a second. I'm not sure. I mean, as much as I, I'm, I am um, heartened by Chris, the, the offer Chris made to research um, how to handle a gift of this magnitude, um, donation of this magnitude. Um, I'm not sure what significant outcome would cause us to not approve that Pinello, Spinello um, matter. And I personally am, am inclined if we were to take a vote to approve it. Um, we have I, a, we have a quorum, but you, you're going to say something, Steve. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I just thought we had, by mutual agreement, had agreed to defer that until the next meeting. Or uh, we, we had at that point, but I'm, now I'm revisiting it, saying um, that um, I'm wondering if we, if if anything significant is going to happen between now and the next meeting, that might cause us to not be able to move forth on that in a positive way. We're going to move on it one way or the other. But my impression is that it, it, it seems so beneficial, even though the optics of being appearances and da 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 da. Um, so um, I think we're going to say yes. I don't know why we're putting off the yes. I mean, I, mean, I, I discussed that I was still seeking more understanding on this I, I think john was also feeling the same way i, I am not prepared to prove it at this moment uh, okay. I, I'll, I'll accept this as a motion for reconsideration of our decision to defer this to the next meeting um and, and john if you want to say open it back up uh yeah i i, I would i would second that motion um that it, well, what is the what is the motion you you propose, Steve? I, I, I would say, let me just say, I I need more information because I think we in a in a situation like this where it's going to have some precedential value because we rely on prior decisions. I think we ought owe it to ourselves to be a, a little bit more deliberate and and to the extent we can be able to identify with clarity what factors we considered in making such an approval so that future boards can look back and say, here's what they did then and here's why they did it, as opposed to they just did it. Sure. I concur. I, I, I see it now. That's, that makes sense to me too. Thank you for getting me back in line again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> If we don't have any objection, we're going to move to adjourn uh, the public session of our meeting today. No objection here. Okay. Hearing no objection, we will adjourn uh, the public session. Thank you for joining us today. Okay.